Did you miss me? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. It's been a week since my last video, that very different video here on United People's TV. Uh, there's lots I want to say to everyone in this video before I go into what is the actual crux of the video, and that's Man United's ideal summer transfer window, and my own opinion on what I would see as an ideal and realistic summer that I think could happen if everything falls into place. Before I get into that, there's a couple of things I want to say to everybody. First, the response to that video that I did last week has blown me away absolutely blown me away. I have replied to quite literally hundreds of people from all around the world, all with their own stories, all so many of them feeling empowered by the video that I did. And that was amazing for, for me to be able to turn what was quite a massive negative in my life to something that might turn out to be positive and help a lot of people. That's wicked. And it's made me realize that I think there needs to be more role models in terms of uh, male mental health. And I think that's something I I maybe want to sort of explore and go down. I think I want to maybe start recording some podcasts, start looking into it a bit more, start doing more about it. Because because of so many people that reached out to me that were positively affected by the video, I wouldn't want to let that go to waste. So as I said, I want to say thank you to every single person who responded to that video. It's like 1,500 comments on, on YouTube and Facebook and so many people email me directly. It was wicked. So thank you to everybody for that. And it's nice to sort of be able to do that video and sort of now look forward, look ahead and look towards the summer transfer window before I quickly do that. Some exciting news is that uh, United People's TV, our Discord server went public this week after lots of work, lots of effort. So if you haven't already, there's an invite link in the description. Come and join over there. There's hundreds of reds joining every week now. There's thousands of Reds already on there. I do live chats on there. You can ask me any questions. I answer them on there. There's lots of good content over on that Discord. It's only going to get bigger and better from now on. I want every single one of you to be involved in that. But today's video is all about what I would consider to be the ideal summer for Manchester United this summer because big things have to happen and big things are going to happen. It's going to be a mad, mad transfer window for a lot of teams. And United really need to try and take advantage of it, even though it's it, the craziness that is coronavirus has made it into a, a very strange and very hard to predict transfer window. But I'm going to try and do my best and give my 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 opinions on, on what I would see as an ideal and realistic summer, because there's no point doing a dream summer where sign Messi and sign everyone, it's, just, it's not going to happen. And maybe what my ideal summer won't happen either, but... It's my opinion. Let's see if you can agree with it in the comments below. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. If you like, this is a new setup, but I'll be here for a while. New camera, new microphone. Hopefully it sounds better. Hopefully it looks a bit better. Unfortunately, it's still me on camera, but there's nothing I can do about that. But make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But let's talk about what I would consider to be United's ideal summer transfer window. Now, I've made my opinion on this extremely, extremely clear. I think United's most important signing this summer is a defensive midfielder. And there's two, I would say, two main candidates in the Premier League. You've got Wilfred and Diddy from, uh, from Leicester. And the player that I've been banging on about for so long, and I will continue to, and I will continue to say that I think he would be an ideal signing, and that's Ruben Neves. Uh, look, he's been so consistent at Wolves. He's a defensive midfielder who's... More like a playmaker from deep. Very happy spraying the ball long. Very accurate spraying the ball long. Somebody whose interception game is very good. And what we need, what we basically need in the defensive midfielder at United is somebody who can screen that back four, can win the ball back and can playmake from deep. And can do all three of those ridiculously well at a high energy level for 90 minutes. Ruben Neves is your man. He really is. And Wolves... If we tried to sign Ruben Neves 12, 18 months ago, would have been an outrageously expensive signing. But Wolves, unfortunately for them, since Jota's left, Jimenez has obviously had his head injury this year. They've struggled. And I think now is the time to really go in and try and get Ruben Neves for a good price. Obviously, he's Premier League proven, which is a tick in the box because you don't have to worry about him adapting to the pace and, and the power of the Premier League. He's ready for it. And you might have to pay a slight premium for that, but pay it. I see I see United signing a defensive midfielder as the single most important signing we can make this summer. Yes, we need a right winger. Yes, we need a striker we can rely on. And yes, we need a centre-back partner, maybe for Maguire, that can really bring the best out of Maguire and also bring the best out of United's defence as a whole shape. But saying that, Lindor's been quite good recently. 
But I think a defensive midfielder is the player that when we sign him, changes the shape of our team more than anybody else. Because when you have a defensive midfielder, it free properly frees up Paul Pogba. Maybe he won't be here next year. Maybe are we having to do a video on that? But I'm in this video, Paul Pogba's in my team next year. And that's why someone like Bruno Neves, who sits and we can play a proper 4-3-3 with one holding midfielder, instead of having to rely on Fred and McTominay. And the only reason we're relying on those two is because Solskjaer does not have a, a top-class def defensive midfielder who we can trust on their own to do the job. And he trusts Fred and McTominay to do that job together. But Ruben Neves is capable of doing it on his own. And that is why I want to see us sign him. And I think it will be an outrageously good signing. What's he like, 23 now? He's got goals in him. He's got... He's tenacious. His injury record's ridiculous. I was just looking at it earlier. I'm not sure whether transfer market is right, but they're saying that he hasn't really missed a game for Wolves. It's just his injuries were back with Porto. And the Portuguese connection, maybe that will help Bruno Fernandes. Not that he needs any help. But if I want to do anything that might help Bruno Fernandes, hell yeah, I want to do it. Now, there may be other defensive midfielders around the world that you know that I haven't watched enough of. So let me know in the comments if there's anyone in world football and European football that I should be looking at. And maybe I'll do a bit more research, try and speak to some journalists from teams who he plays for. And I'm actually going to try and speak to a Wolves journalist to really get the inside story of Ruben Neves. Because from the outside looking in, he's perfect for United. He's exactly what we need. And that is a player, as I said, I think can really change the overall shape. Not because, actually no, because we need a defensive midfielder in an individual perspective, but from a whole team shape perspective, it frees up our two central midfielders to do their job properly as proper central midfielders. And you won't have to rely on, on, on Bruno or Pogba or anyone tracking back because Matic can't cover that position on his own anymore. And we, in bigger games, we do need to play without Fred and McTominay together because they stunt our creative force from the middle. And you then heavily rely on Bruno Fernandes to make the magic happen. And when he can't do that, you know, to become unstuck. I think that changes if you get Ruben Neves and you free up the two central midfielders in front of him to really rely on creating. And he's got the ability. Look, there's so many reasons. I've given plenty. There's so many reasons why I think Ruben Neves would be the ideal signing. And I think it's a very realistic signing as well that we could make and make quite easily. So that is the first ideal signing that I would like to see this summer. And the, uh, the second one, I think at this point, it's really obvious for everybody. And it's for two reasons. And that's Erling Haaland. And the first reason is, my word, he is unreal. The, you know, the term beast is sort of a bit overused in football, but if you watch him play, he dominates. He's like a wrestler, but he's a footballer. And he scores all sorts of goals. Outside the box, inside the box, left foot, right foot, running through, headers, finesse touches, chips, dinks, corners. Not directly corners, but Erling Haaland really has it all. And I've never seen a player so young, so full of his own belief in his own ability that can back it up at the same time. Because you can be arrogant, you can be cocksure, but if you don't deliver, then ultimately you're not going to build yourself an excellent reputation and a name. But Erling Haaland delivers on that. And United need a number nine that we can rely on. I think we've seen it now. Anthony Martial last season was fantastic. He really was, I think. Um, but this season he's... He's proven that you can't rely on Anthony Martial as your pure number nine if you are going to chase the Premier League and you are going to chase the Champions League, which are our ambitions from now on. And Marcus Rashford is not a striker. Edinson Cavani looks like he's going to be leaving, going back, going to Argentina, sorry, to join Boca Juniors. And his injury record this year has shown that you can't rely on Cavani either. And Mason Greenwood is a player, I think, that will continue to be moulded into that centre forward. But because of the weaknesses we have in the right wing, I understand why Greenwood's playing there. But hopefully he gets more minutes through the middle next year because he definitely looks a lot more comfortable there. But Erling Haaland, not only do United need to sign him, every goddamn team in the Premier League needs to make sure that Man City do not replace Sergio Aguero with Erling Haaland. Or you may as well just write off next year. It is as simple as that. And the ambitions in your pre Manchester United's ambitions in the Premier League... Yeah, we can have all the ambitions in the world, but if the biggest rival and the best team is going out and signing the best striker and they mince the league this year without Aguero, what are they going to do next year if they have Ireland? Hell no. There is, a, there is a moral responsibility for everybody in the Premier League to make sure that City do not sign Haaland. 
And it might be difficult for United because Haaland, obviously Alvinga, his dad, Captain City, he's got links there. He's got a history there. And that's probably the only time I think City will ever be able to say that about a player. But United need, Solskjaer needs to, as I said, start ringing him up in Norwegian, start cracking jokes, start sending him some fermented fish or whatever the Norwegian specialty is. Because we need to bring Haaland to United. And if United had agreed to that release clause in his contract, Haaland would already be here. But unfortunately, this summer, we would then be having the conversation about, are we really going to lose Haaland? Look at us getting mugged off, blah, blah, blah. So we, it is what it is. We didn't get Haaland when, we, when, we got, when he went to Dortmund. They've enjoyed the few years, the couple of years, sorry, that he's been there. United need to make sure that we enjoy the next few years of his career because he would transform the shape of that team. Uh, wow. Rashford on the left, Haaland up front, and you're probably looking at, at Greenwood on the right, and maybe the, uh, Matt Ahmed's going to come in next year. He's looked exciting, but I can understand why Solskjaer is slowly implementing him because there's no point putting him into a pressure pot situation and getting negative press on a, on a kid's shoulders. He doesn't need that, so I understand what he's doing. And a lot of you will say, you're mad, Sam. Jaden Sancho, he's got to be our number one priority going forward. And I... I don't think that. I don't really think either anybody's wrong there in saying that, yes, we need Jen Sancho, yes, we need Erling Haaland, hell yeah, we need both of them. But if we're going to get one this summer, I'd rather get Erling Haaland. I see, and the term generation was thrown around, but good luck finding a striker like Erling Haaland again anytime soon. Not at that age, not with the goal record that he's already got, and not with the career he's going to have if he can hopefully, for his sake, stay injury free. The guy's just mustard, and I want that in my team. Simple as that. Maybe it's not realistic. Maybe it's going to be a ridiculous amount of money, but next year there is a release clause, and Dortmund know they will only be able to sell Haaland for a fixed amount of money. I don't know what that release clause is because apparently it's 75 million, 85, but I spoke to Jurgen Kurz from Ruhr and Nachtrichten, the local Dortmund paper, and he said even we don't know exactly how much it is. So Dortmund are keeping that close to their chest, and maybe it's more than anybody thinks it is. But United have to go out, all out, to sign Erling Haaland. We have to go all out early this summer as well because we can't spend this summer flirting and trying to sign Haaland only for him to join City and for us to be left without a new striker, without a new right winger. We have to go hard and fast with Haaland and see what happens. Either we sign him, brilliant, or we don't. We move on. Maybe we go and look at Jadon Sancho. But for me, I think they would be my two ideal signings. A defensive midfielder and a striker. And I think you could fairly argue, and I'm sure plenty of you will in the comments, that maybe we could do with a centre-back and maybe a right-winger. And in an ideal world, you'd sign all four. But in terms of what I would say is the priorities, and I would go for a, for a defensive midfielder and I would go for a striker. And that's why I'm saying Ruben Neves and Erling Haaland. And just as importantly as United signing players this summer, it's really, really important that United move players on. And for me, there's some obvious and key ones. And David De Gea is the first one. And there's a reason I chose this picture when talking about David De Gea because he's just had his baby with a Dern. And De Gea has stayed at United through Alex Ferguson, through Moyes, through Van Gaal, through Mourinho, through Solskjaer. He's been through everything. And he has been one of the pillars that's managed to stop United falling further than we've fallen. And United fans will never forget that. But given what's happening with David De Gea right now with his family, he's just had that baby, he's stopped. He, 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 he don't wanted to go back to Spain a long time ago. But Davis kept her in Manchester. But now that he's got that family, I think that draw back to Spain is just going to be a little bit too strong for De Gea. And family comes first. Football's just a job at the end of the day. And I think this summer, United are in a privileged position in that it looks like we can replace from within with Dee Henderson, who I think has looked very, very good since he's come in. He's made a mistake in, against AC in the first leg. He made up for it in the second leg with a wonderful save against Ibrahimovic. It looks like Henderson, I think, can be United's goalkeeper. And I think it's at a perfect position and a time that it will suit David De Gea to leave. And it will suit Manchester United to sell him, to get that money and reinvest it in someone else. Maybe you can sell De Gea and use that money simply for Ruben Neves and call it just... Balance it out. But for me, it, it makes sense for United to move De Gea on this summer because we have Henderson. And for De Gea, 
I think it makes sense for him personally because of his family, because the, he stayed at United for a long, long time and he could have left. He could have ran away years ago, but he didn't and he stayed. But I think it makes sense for all parties now. And that's why I think this summer for me, De Gea should be sold. Uh, and I think it will suit him and I think it will suit United at the same time. And Juan Mata is another player I think that should be sort of released. I mean, what a man, what a human. He's, I'd love for him to come back to United in some capacity in a role. You're not going to find a better ambassador or a better role model for a professional football than Juan Mata. And it's absolute condolences to Juan Mata and his family uh, because uh, his mother passed away this week. I'm not sure. I didn't look into whether it was natural causes or anything, but my condolences to, to Juan and maybe in the same sense as me saying that De Gea with his newborn child and the, the draw of going back to Spain, maybe the, the draw for Mata to go back to Spain might be from a different angle, but it's all about family. And I think Juan Mata strikes me as a family man. He strikes me as a, yeah, he absolutely does. He's a clearly a wonderful human being. And, and for me, as a, in the same way that moving De Gea on this summer makes sense for United and makes sense for Juan Mata, I think, sorry, not Juan Mata, it makes sense for United and it makes sense for De Gea. I think this summer it makes sense for United to let Mata go. It makes sense for Mata to go maybe back to Spain because we've got Donny van der Beek as well. It, it, again, it, it's clear. The path is clear in letting both of those players go and let both those players go. That would free up about half a million, I think, a week in wages just from two players. Wow. Pays for Haaland and probably Neves, both at the same time. And then there's other players that can be left as well, that can leave, sorry. Jesse Lingard, done fantastic since he's gone to West Ham. And I don't think anybody doubted that he could. It's just that his time at United was up in the same way it was up for Johnny Evans, but it didn't make him a crap footballer. It just was, his time was up at United. He's gone on to do great things since he's left. And I think Jesse Lingard can go on to do excellent things as well. He's back in the England squad straight away. Made a real impact at West Ham. And I think we can get 20 to 30 million for him. He deserves the move. He deserves to play football. And this is the summer to do it. And hopefully... Jesse can have a barnstorm in Euros as well because that might bump his, his cost up a little bit. And that'll be good for United. Uh, Andreas Pereira is another player that will leave. It didn't work out for him. He's had plenty of opportunities at United, but he did not take advantage of them. Uh, and he'll be leaving. And those four players, hell, Phil Jones. There's a reason I put a picture of him in a suit here because I can't find any damn photos recently of him in a football kit because it's been that long. Phil Jones, we've got to close the book on Phil Jones, please. Like, come on, there's being ruthless and then there's been the opposite of just letting Phil Jones beat a club for, what, he's coming up to a testimonial or something, isn't he? Mad. Move Phil Jones on, get those wages off the books. Don't really care whether we get any money for him, just get him off the books. And if you're looking at that as a summer, United sign Ruben Neves, United sign Erling Haaland, and United let De Gea go, Mata go, Lingard go, Pereira go. And Jones. You imagine how much better our squad would be next year. And in terms of the balance of the books, De Gea, surely you've got to get 50 million for De Gea. I don't know what the goalkeeper market is like anymore, if I'm being completely honest. But he was worth a hell of a lot more than that a couple of years ago. I would say 50 million, at least for De Gea. That's my own personal opinion. When matter, you're looking at like five to 10, if that doesn't really matter that much. Jesse Lingard, I would say between 20 and 30 would be a fair price. Andres Pereira, somewhere between 5 and 10, I would say. So you're probably looking at enough there to certainly pay for Ruben Neves and certainly pay for a big chunk of Erling Haaland. And I don't think United will... We're looking at net spend this summer. We're going to look at somewhere between 50 and 100 million that we're actually going to put in on players. So we're definitely going to need to bring money in by selling players. And that's why I would say that's an ideal summer because... You've got the defensive midfielder, which is the position I think is going to change United the most. You've got that striker that is, he's going to score 20 plus goals every year for the next 10 years if he stays injury free. Probably 30 plus. The guy's unreal. I want him at United. He can change our whole shape of our attack. And our attack's good as it is. It's not great. Only Haaland can change that. And we have to stop him going, stop him going and sit at the same time. And to get rid of those players off the books, De Gea, Henderson's already there. Mata, Van der Beek's already there. Lingard, Pereira, Jones, they're just not, they're well, none of them are at the club anymore. Well, Jones technically is, but that would be an ideal summer for me. A dream summer? We throw Jaden Sancho in there. We throw another centre back in there. But given what's happened with the coronavirus and how tight United are, really, without the coronavirus, 
I don't think it's going to get any less tight in this summer's window. And that's why we have to sell at the same time as buying. But for me, if we're looking at the priorities, that defensive midfielder changes everything for me. And I don't really understand why people would suggest otherwise, if I'm being completely honest. And a striker. And I think the striker, you can argue a striker or a right, right winger, sorry, depending on where you want. But one of those two positions, and for me, it's a striker. But let me know what you think about all that in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy the new set, the new microphone here. I hope it sounds nice. Actually, I did a few test videos and it sounds really nice. Uh, nice camera. And as I said, I was properly blown away by the response to the video that I did uh, in a really positive way. And to be able to turn something so negative into something that that clearly can be a platform for positivity for so many other people, that's what I want to do on this platform. That's why I'm thinking I want to start doing some podcasts, start speaking to some United players about maybe some mental health problems that they've had in the past because it's important for men to speak out about it. And if I can be someone who can help facilitate that conversation, then in the same way that I thought it was my duty to do that video, I would say it's my duty to do that after. And that's something I really want to do. So thank you all for the response to that. Make sure you drop a like on the video. It always helps. And I, I, let's get back to it. Uh, was it Brighton at the weekend? I'm looking forward that the break for football was was good for everyone. It, it was it, We reached a point of kind of exhaustion with football. But a nice couple of weeks off. Decided to have an operation halfway through. That went all right. Let's see what goes on next. But big up to every single one of you. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. And make sure you leave your ideal summer transfer window in the comments below. Take it easy.